What's up guys, I'm Tash and this is Tash Tech and today we have a MakerBot uh, video for you. We were given the MakerBot from a company called Rectron here in South, in South Africa. They're the ones who are bringing the MakerBots into South Africa and it's so cool because I've wanted one for so long. And uh, they just gave me one to do a video about it and I was like super ex excited about it. And we've had it for about a week now and it's really an amazing printer. That's just the bottom line. I'm just going to start off with saying that it's a really amazing printer. I know that they get a lot of hate online. I'm not too sure why. but they're really a good printer, okay? Um, so this is the MakerBot Replicator. This is the fifth generation one. The difference between the fifth generation, I know one of the big differences is that it has a smart extruder. And uh, yeah, I think that's basically the biggest difference. I'm gonna show you why it's a smart extruder, okay? Real quick, it comes right off. It's got magnets that hold it in there, okay? And the pins that connect it to the main thing. So your motor, your stepper motor goes through, I assume it's a stepper motor, it goes through there to turn the extruder which is built in here and your hot end is here and it's got these four magnets over here and this makes so so much sense to have an extruder like this, a hot end and an extruder in one because you can just snap it off, clean up whatever's going on, if there is anything you need to do, snap it back on. Okay, boom, that's it. The other thing that, okay, so we've had it for about a week and the first thing I printed was a nut and bolt set. And oh man, I don't have it here, it's at my office. But it was so phenomenal because I've printed nuts and bolts before and you always gotta like do a bit of fine tuning on it to get it to, 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 to actually turn properly. And this was like literally you snap it right off, boom. And it's, it's twisting into one another and it is so perfect. Okay, that was the first thing we printed while it was in my office. I just couldn't help myself. We took it out of the box, boom, started printing. It's not a new one, it's a demo model, um, so I can't do an unboxing. The reason I'm telling you that is because I can't do an unboxing for you to show you what you get inside, because I'm not too sure. I can't expect them to give me a new one. Either these things are really uh, a little bit pricey, but you really get what you pay for. I mean, really, this is a stunning machine. Um, so here at the, at the back here, just a little bit about the, the machine. So we did the smart extruder here at the back is where the, the filament loads. Uh, something to note about the filament, and this is, I think, it's generic with all MakerBots, is that it's a very narrow, low-profile filament roll. You can see that compared to uh, another filament roll that we have here, which is your average filament roll. You can see the profile difference. Okay, thanks, Liz. You can take that one away. They didn't give me any filament or anything of the likes, but I do have MakerBot filament, which I use every now and then. Um, so I've got a few rolls. This is not the MakerBot filament, so that was the first thing we printed, okay? And then going back to the machine, so we've got the bed. It's not a heated bed, it only does PLA. Um, it can, I'm not too sure if it can do any of your flexible materials, um, but they advise us not to. I think it's only PLA. I generally didn't like PLA until very recently, until we actually got this, and then we got a whole bunch of PLA. And uh, I'm gonna stop printing from with PLA from now on. It's just so much easier. Okay, first of all, like I've been having issues with my printers and my heated beds in particular. And I, I don't understand why we need a heated bed. And now I see you don't need a heated bed. If your printer's right, you actually don't need a heated bed. We had a few issues with it on the first, the first, uh, not the first print. The first print was the little nut and bolt thing. After that, we started printing this monster. This is the Canterbury spaceship from the show Expanse, all right? I mean, this thing is so cool. Uh, if you guys watch Expanse, if you haven't watched it, the season one's done, go and watch it, okay? It is so cool. All right, so we started off, and it's printed in a couple of pieces because it all went fit on the bed at once. So we had to split it apart, and what I noticed was that we were often getting, uh, first of all, the, the, the filament I was using wasn't fitting on here. So I kind of just stuck it on there and was half hanging off, half on. We fed the filament through the PTFE tubing. It's not a Bowden setup, that it's a direct drive extruder, but the PTFE tubing just makes sure that the, the filament gets into the right place there. We fed it through there, and every so often we would get a 54 error, extruder error. Okay, 54 extruder error and it would basically say extruder disconnected. We started doing a bit of research and we found out that people hated the smart extruder because of that. Um, the, the magnets are not as strong as, as you would expect them to be. So I think what was happening was the thing would click off and then did, like disconnect for a slight second, but that slight second is just enough for it to give you an error. So what we did was 
we pulled it out, we, we pushed the pins in to reset them as per what MakerBot's website recommends in, in terms of the troubleshooting. We stuck it back on and off it went, no issues after that. Okay. We then had an issue with it saying uh, filament jam. Um, at that point I was starting to get a bit peeved, but having built many rep reps myself, you learn patience. Okay. You're not going to turn this thing on and that's why I'm so amazed by this thing because I've built only rep reps. I've touched a few, you know, wan hose and uh, an ultimate here and there but the MakerBot was the first time I'm, I'm using a MakerBot and um, I must just say that in terms of a rep rep coming from a rep rep background there's a lot of patience you learn in terms of troubleshooting a rep rep because you built it yourself and it's an open source program all right so you tend to have patience with this thing and you, you because you have patience because of your rep rep you 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 the, the the issues you find with this are a lot easier to fix than with a rep rep than with your normal rep rep so you i liked it more because of that fact i liked it more because i actually was able to start a print and forget about it okay not really forget about it but you know what i mean it's not like my rep rep so you start printing you check on it every 10 or 15 minutes um then the second issue we had was that it was saying filament jam so immediately i knew okay something was wrong here because a i have a very uh slapdash filament spool uh, set up so I basically took my uh, my rep wrap I have a, a cage a, a galvanized tubing cage a setup that I use when I'm doing quick prints and things like that with, with test printers we set that up and we fed we I disconnected the PTFE tube and fed the the filament right into there and it ran for like I think it was 22 hours non-stop printing parts for this boom done no issues I then brought it home uh, to my studio here and we had it on this table and we printed out the Kylo Ren, okay? Again, we had no issues as far as I'm aware. Do we have any issues with it? No, no issues whatsoever on the Kylo Ren, nothing, okay? I then uh, decided, okay, it's time for me to start printing the BB-8 head, which is what I was getting this machine in to print. This little, this little guy right here, the Star Wars BB-8 droid, and we, and we started having issues with it. Um, well, before that, sorry, I said, okay, it's time. But now I didn't want the whole bulky uh, uh, galvanized pipe set up on the table here um, because we were doing time lapses and things like that. There was no space on the table because there was cameras all over. So I had to print a bracket to hold the filament because I didn't like it on there and I didn't like it on the galvanized. So I, I found this bracket on Thingiverse. It was a very bad idea to print this bracket terrible okay doesn't hold on there so I put a um, a uh, how did I stick I used a a, a a grip here and here to just hold it on there I'm gonna print another one um, unfortunately we have to give this one back but they are giving me the fourth generation to carry on printing my BB-8 with so I'm gonna print another uh, um, bracket getting back to that the then I started printing the the BB-8 head okay now this was the main thing, the main reason why we wanted to start print, why we went to this printer, is because uh, I wanted to have all my parts uniform, and I didn't think I was going to get that. I have uh, the faith I have in my rep reps is really good, but I, I would prefer a, a printer built by a, like a big company to print my 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 parts. And MakerBot have really done a good job with this printer. Um, so I started printing this, and we ran into lots of problems. Okay, first of all, we had the problem where it was saying extruder error. Uh, 54 extruded disconnected then pulled it off again pushed the pins in popped it back on it was fine again then we started having the filament jam error and we, we were constantly getting that eventually i just sat down with it and i, I watched it it would print a little bit and say filament jam and i saw what it was doing the hot end was touching the bed at that point i knew that we had a bed leveling issue so i leveled the bed i started the print again and i forgot about it come in this morning and it's done okay that's that. I mean, people can go and complain as much as they want about this printer, but you need to understand it is very simple to fix. These things will happen with all kinds of printers. It's how you, it's how the printer software or firmware and the company developing it actually deals with those issues and how quickly you can get them resolved. And MakerBot have done a great job with that. I'm, I'm not getting paid to say this stuff. I'm just saying it because they're giving me the printer and I've, I have a big background in 3D printing and this is an amazing printer. All right, on a comparison, but uh, this is good enough. And um, 
you know, this is, I wanted to say this is a Smart Extruder. They have released a Smart Extruder Plus. Uh, a bit of research we did before in terms of issues and we did see a, a bunch of issues that guys were having because of the Smart Extruder. Things like the uh, bed leveling, uh, it wasn't. The, we, they were getting homing errors and all kinds of things. And um, I haven't seen any of that. It's possibly, it was software, it was firmware related. So they did fix it. Firmware is easy to fix, to so stop bitching. All right. <laughs> They will release a firmware for it, a firmware fix for it. So I didn't see any of those issues. We didn't experience and I've done, I think in total we've done about 70 to 80 hours of printing with this. I mean, it hasn't stopped since I got it. Me printing little pieces here and there and big things. And I, I've had a few issues with it. That's about it. Few issues, all right, which have been very quickly fixed. And like I said, you're gonna have issues. It's about how quickly they are resolved. Okay, um, the other thing I like about it is that it has the USB um, plug-in that you can copy to the local, it's, it's internal storage, so you can take your USB and walk away. I don't like the whole SD card thing, it pisses me off. Um, yeah, I like USB, it has a camera built in. I'm not too sure if the fourth generation has one, we'll have a look, but it has a camera built in. What I would like to see is that a streaming capability on that camera, for some reason, the issue I did have, the major issue I did have, which wasn't a, a big issue, but for me it was a bit of a, a nibbler, is that when we downloaded the MakerBot software and I, I registered on Thingiverse, I have a Thingiverse account and I'm using my Thingiverse details to log into the MakerBot software and to link it to the Thingiverse, it wasn't letting me. It was saying internet connectivity required even though we had internet connectivity. That could have been a, a, a single lapse in their server operating, in their server operational, uh, operating um, time. But um, that was the thing we had. But doesn't, it doesn't bother me because we just closed that window and we carried on. You import your STL file into the MakerBot, you save it, you export it to your flash drive, and you put it on your printer. Okay, I have a PrinterBot um, uh, OctoPrint running my Raspberry Pis that operate my printers. And uh, I'm not too sure if you can do that on here, but as far as I see, you don't need to. That MakerBot software slices so amazing, it's really good. And it's so simple to use as well. I can understand why people do get, get frustrated now that I'm talking about it, um, because if you're buying it, a lot of people I come into contact with say, Tash, um, you know, how do you have 3D printers? They're so expensive. That's because you're looking at these guys. You're looking at the MakerBots, you're looking at the Ultimakers and that. So it's those type of people that are buying them that are complaining about them, I would think, because you don't have a reparate background, so you don't understand how it works. I would say if, you're gonna, if you want a 3D printer, make one first. They're so cheap to make and you can buy a kit and you make it yourself. When you do make it yourself, you're gonna understand how it works, you're gonna understand the G-code and you're gonna understand the heated bed and the ramps and all of that. From there, you can easily troubleshoot these machines. I'm not saying if you have the money, don't go buy one of these, go buy one of these, okay? But if you're gonna get frustrated, buy one of these and buy a rep, rep as well. <laughs> because let me tell you, I'm not saying anything bad about this printer, it is an amazing printer. I mean, you know, I wasn't, you can ask people around me, I, I constantly curse and swear at my rep reps. And uh, even though we had issues with this one, I, I didn't, I was, I was so overjoyed to fix the issues because it was going to fix and it was, work, it was working after that. Um, what else? Yeah, so that's it for this printer for now. I'm going to do a video on the fourth generation one and we're also going to do a time lapse video for the MakerBot, the BB-8 head that we're printing. Uh, I'm gonna do, I'm printing the head on the fifth generation um, because I just, I, don't, I wanted to. I think it'll be, if anything, the latest generation will, will do it justice. And then I'm going to be printing the body on the fourth generation. Um, I don't think there'll be that much of a difference in terms of resolution for the fifth and the fourth generation. We will find out. But I think in a bigger, in a bigger circumference of a, of a, of a BBA droid, you won't really notice any imperfections in a larger scale on the fourth generation. So, and the fourth generation is going to take hella long to, to, to print. Hella long. Okay, I mean, I'm talking about the, 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 the body. I mean, this took 14 hours and this is at 0 0.2 millimeters, uh, so 200 microns per layer. But it came out better than I could have printed it on my, 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 on my rep wraps. That's, that's just the long and short of it. So then that's going to be a separate video series. series. So we're going, to, we're going to do the head, we're going to do the body, we're going to motorize, we're going to put all the robotics in, and yeah, that's going to be cool. Real quick, um, thanks for watching. The social links are around here somewhere, okay? Or in the description below. Leave a comment, because I like to hear from you guys. Um, yeah, hit that like button. Check me out on Facebook, check me out on Instagram. It was nice chatting to you guys.